Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to cover quite a bit. Um, so currently at the moment, we have our Python script running and we get a console log of the results in the back end, but nothing actually happens on the front end. So first of all, we're just going to handle that and send some results back to the front end. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and edit the Python TensorFlow script. And we need that to actually return uh, JSON data to us. So at the moment, it, it just returns a bunch of strings. So we need to edit that to return JSON. And then we're going to go ahead and set up MongoDB, register it, connect up the database into our Express application. And then we can go ahead and set up some models and some schemas for users and for pets as well. And then finally, we'll just create some APIs to register a user, log in a user and authenticate, and also create and update a pet as well and assign it, of course, to a user. So we have quite a lot to do, so let's get started. Okay, so as I said, the first thing I want to do is actually send back some data to our front end. So if we just start up our application, npm run start, and we go over to the front end, you'll see that if we actually select a file and submit, nothing actually happens on the front end. It just it looks like it's trying to submit. We have this little animation in the window. It looks like it's doing something. And that's because it is doing something, but that's on the back end. So if we go back to our editor, we can see the results in our console, but we're not actually sending any data back to the front end. Now, if you remember, um, when we um, when we get a post, we also get a request response and next. Okay, so the request is that file that comes in. That's the request, and it's going to that forward slash uploads. So what we need to do is actually use the response. Um, method that we have available to us to send back a response. So we can send back whatever we like, um, a message, or in this case, we want to send back the pi res, so the results of the Python script. So that's quite simple. All we need to do is do res.send, and then we can just send back pi res. So if we go ahead and let's just delete these comments and consoles that we don't need, uh, restart the server. And now let's just go ahead and try that again. And we should get something back. So let's submit an image, give it a few seconds to process and run through Python. Okay, and we get back a an array of strings. So that's great that we're getting something back, but we can't really do much with these results. So this is where we need to go ahead and edit the Python script to actually return JSON data to us. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go to our playground scripts folder and the script we need to edit is label underscore image. Okay, and just here with these imports line 22, let's just go ahead and import JSON so that we can actually play with JSON and export some results in JSON. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that this is where we get our results back. So let me just close this up so you can see. Okay, so this is that print evaluation time which is, if we scroll up, that's this just here. And then this is printing out a template and that template is defined just here. So we have the score and the label name. So this just here. So we don't actually need any of that. Okay, but what we do need to do is create a new array. So let's do case underscore list is equal to, and let's just initialize that array. And then we can do a for loop command. So for i in top underscore k, and top k is these results just here. In fact, we can change this to 10. We don't actually have 10 pets at the moment, but what I do want to return is maybe like the top 10. So this is where we can kind of cut that off. So at the moment it was just returning a maximum of five results. I want a maximum of 10 results, even though we don't have that yet. Okay, so in this loop, we need to specify a case. So this is a neat object. And this is what we want to return for each item in in the results, okay? So we, again, we want to return JSON. So we need to write it as JSON. And what we need is the ID, and that's coming from labels, I. And we also need the score, and that's going to be results, I. But we need to float the results. In order, for, in order for this to work. So let's, um, let's take that and put that inside of a float method. Okay, and then we need to actually append that case we just created into that case list array we first initialized. 
Okay, so remember this is empty at the moment. There's nothing in it, but we have our cases, and we want to uh, we want to append our case into the case list for every time it, it loops over a result. Okay, so case list dot append, and then we just stick in a case. Okay, so as this loops through, um, our cases are going to be appended to case list. So this is going to populate. Okay, and then all we need to do now is just uh, print a JSON dumps. So JSON dot dumps, and then we just pass in our case list that we created. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's close our server and restart it. Okay, and then if we go ahead and submit a new image, we should hopefully get some JSON data back. Okay, and we do get some kind of JSON data back, but it's not strictly JSON yet. Um, so let's go back to our editor and let's go back to our server.js. And what we need to do is actually json.pass this. So let's try this. So we're just throwing in the response into a method which is json.pass, which is going to make this into actual JSON data for us. So let's restart the server again and let's see what we get back this time. Cool. So now we actually get back an array of objects that we can work with. So we have the ID and the score for each result. Of course, we only have five results because we only have five folders set up currently. Okay, so the next thing we actually need to do now is go ahead and start setting up MongoDB. So what we actually want is to be able to register a user and a pet and each pet or each, um, yeah, each pet is going to have an ID. And we're going to train our Python script to run on the ID of the pet. So as an owner goes in and registers a pet, they can upload an image. And as they upload an image, it gets stored in a folder. And that folder, instead of being called Millie or Border Collars, is going to be the ID of the pet in the database. So that's how we can link up the image of the um, pet um, in, the, in the database. And then as it runs through a script, if it returns a result, it's going to return a result of an ID that is equal to a pet that exists in our database. And this is how we can match it up. And then from that ID, we'll be able to grab the owner or the user, whatever you want to call it, and you know, export the contact details and anything else that we need as well. So it might sound confusing, but bear with, it will get easier. So let's go ahead and just register for MongoDB Cloud first. So this is a free service that you can use to just um, get up and running very quickly with MongoDB. So just hit um, try free and then just register. So I'm going to register with an email I set up. Cool. So let's go create a cluster and under the free tier. And you'll see there's loads of free tiers available here. So I'm going to pick Ireland because that's closest to me. And cluster name, I'll just call this Peters. And create cluster. Okay, and then your actual cluster will be put into a queue. Um, so you have to wait around seven to 10 minutes for this to be set up. So I'm just going to pause this here. Actually, whilst that's setting up, let's go ahead and create some files and folders. So in the root directory, we're going to need a couple of things. So let's create a directory for config. This is going to hold our config variables for like connecting to the database and such. Let's create a new file here, which is db.js. And let's also create another file next to it called default.json. OK, so in our default.json, we're going to have a Mongo URI. And eventually, when our cluster is set up, we're going to paste in a key here to connect to it. And we're also going to need a JSON web token secret, which we won't need just yet, but we are going to need it um, in the future. So I'm just going to set this up for now, and we'll just say my secret token. Cool. 
save that. And let's go to db.js and let's bring in a couple of things. So of course we're gonna to need to bring in mongoose. So let's do const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And I can't actually remember if we installed this. So let me just double check. It should be in the package JSON. So no, we haven't actually installed that yet. No, no, we have, here we go. But we do need to install config and possibly some other things. Um, yeah, cause we're gonna need that. So let's just go ahead and do that. npm install config. And then we can bring that in as well. So const config is equal to require config. And then we're gonna do const db is equal to config.get mongo uri. There we go. So this is actually coming from our default JSON mongo uri. So it by default actually looks into a file called default.json and it can just grab this mongo uri once we paste it in. So that's how that works. And then we're gonna to need to actually connect to our database. So we can do const connect db is equal to async. And we'll just put an arrow function here. And we're gonna to need to export whatever we write in there. So let's just do module.exports is equal to that connect db function that we're about to write. Okay, and in here, we're just gonna do a try catch. So try catch. And we'll get an error back if there's an error. And we can just do console.log, we'll just say e.message, because we have a message uh, attached to that error, and process.exit1. Okay, so in the try, what we wanna do is await mongoose.connect, and then we connect to the database, and then there's a couple of things we can pass in here to um, avoid some errors that we might get, which is use new URL parser, set that to true, and use create index, and set that to true as well. And that should stop some depreciation notices. And let's just do a console.log as well to so tell us that it has started. So let's do mongodb connected. Cool. Let's see if our database has been set up which it has, great, so we can click connect. And let's add our current IP address. Oops, clicked off it by mistake. Uh, yep, so add current IP address, add IP address. And then we need to create a user for our database. So we'll do Peters and a password. Create that. Choose a connection method connect your application and this is that string that we need just here cool so we can go back to our editor into config default.json and then just here is where we're pasting that string we just copied now we do need to actually change the username and password here so i'm just going to do that so it's peters and then a password Okay, so now we just need to go to our server and actually tell it to connect to that database. Let's close this down. Okay, and then just before the application, let's try and connect to it here. Well, first of all, we need to bring in that connect DB that we exported. So let's bring that in here. So connect DB is equal to require. And then we specify the path where we created that DBJS file. So that was in config and then db. Okay, and then we also need to bring in mongoose because we haven't got that yet. And that's uh, require mongoose. Okay, let's uh, reorganize this stuff actually. So this is where we initialize the app. Um, these are extras. Okay, so after we've initialized the app, um, this is the middleware. And we'll just connect to the database after we've initialized. So we'll just do connect db. 
Okay, let's see for what see what that gives us. Let's uh, start the server. Hopefully, we get MongoDB connected, which we do. So that's great. We still have a depreciation warning here that we can sort out by using this just here. Um, we'll come to that later, though. That's fine. All right. So now we actually have a database. We need some schemas, some models that we can use and uh, dictate what data should be saved into that database. So there's two ones, there's two that we're going to need initially. Obviously, this will probably expand as we grow. Um, but we're going to need a user, which is going to be like a user or owner, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we'll also need a pet schema as well to dictate what fields should be stored in the pet schema. Now, the user one, again, this, this is open to change at the moment because we may have a different one for owners and then one for users. I don't know yet. Um, we'll come to that. But for now, we'll just keep it generic. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in our root and we'll call this models. Oh, not a file. I need to create a folder. Sorry about that. Okay, and then inside of our models folder, we're going to create two files. So again, one of them is going to be user js and the other one is going to be pet.js so let's start off with user because we need to actually hook up our pets to our users somehow so let's start off with user and let's bring in mongoose so const mongoose is equal to require mongoose because we're going to be working with the database okay and let's do a const we'll say user schema is equal to new mongoose.schema. Okay, and then inside of here is where we can actually dictate all of the fields that are going to be passed into the schema. Okay, but before we forget, let's export it at the bottom. So we'll do module.exports is equal to mongoose.model. And we're going to export user and user schema. So we're just basically exporting this under the name of user. Okay, so what do we need for our users? Well, we're going to need a name because everyone has a name, hopefully. And that's going to be a type string. And that's going to be required true. So if you've not worked with MongoDB, um, it's really quite simple. It's kind of like JSON and how it's written. Um, so you specify the, um, the key and what type of value you should expect. So you get different types like string and number and boolean and date and there's a couple of other ones as well. So aside from the name, we're going to need the email. And again, that's going to be type string. It's going to be required. So that's true. And it also actually needs to be unique because we can't have multiple users registering under the same email. Um, that shouldn't actually happen. So just try and prevent it. Uh, we'll of course need the password and that's going to be of type string and that's also required. So required true. We're going to need a telephone number for sure um, otherwise it's all very well knowing the name of the pet that you've just found but if you can't contact them it's kind of pointless. Um, email is a bit slow when it comes to reuniting pets with owners so we're definitely going to need a telephone number. Um, whoops. Okay, and we'll also do some dates. So this is just going to automatically create some dates on when uh, the user was registered and things like that. So default is, of course, date dot now. All right, so what do we need here? Well, we need a user to hook it up with. So we can actually say user, and we can say type is mongoose.schema.types.objectID. And the reference is going to be user. And this is how we hook up and relate different um, schemas or collections to um, users. 
Okay, so aside from knowing who the owner is or who the user is, um, we're gonna need a name for the pet. And that's gonna be string. And that's also gonna be a required field. Um, we'll probably expand quite a lot on these, um, but for now we'll just keep it simple. So we just need the name. Uh, let's do a status as well. Actually, we'll say missing, and then we'll just do like a true or false. So we'll say type is boolean, and the default is going to be false. Okay, so it's not going to go true until an owner actually reports their pet as missing. And this is going to be an important piece of this whole architecture. So we're going to try and prioritize results by missing. Um, so of course, we're going to get results first of all from Python, from TensorFlow, and that's going to hopefully give us some accurate results anyway. Um, but then we're also going to give the user the option to filter those results that it gets from Python by ones that are missing. Now at the moment, yeah, we're only re returning 10 results, so it's not great. Um, but we'll either return some more results or we'll make a button that then goes and runs a, a script a second time to return more results if the first 10 doesn't match or something like that. And then they can filter by if the um, pet has been reporting missing, uh, which may or may not be the case. Um, obviously pets go missing without the owner actually realizing for quite a while sometimes. Um, but then we'll also probably do like a location filter as well so they can First of all, um, start with a small radius and then they can just expand that radius or the search area to you know, cover a larger um, area. Okay, and then let's just also just put some date stamps in for this as well. So again, type is date and the default will be date.now. Okay, so then we'll just need to set up uh, some middleware for authorization as well. So let's do a new folder for middleware. And let's create one called, a file called auth.js. And we need to bring in JSON web token, which I think is installed, but let's just double check again. Uh, nope, it's not. So let's go ahead and install JSON web token. So npm install. JSON web token. Okay, and then we can bring that into our authorization. So const JWT is equal to require JSON web token. And let's also bring in config because we're going to need that secret key that we created, which isn't very secure at the moment, but we'll change that before we go live. Okay, and then we'll do module.exports is equal to function. And we're gonna get a request response and next. Okay, and we need to get the token from the header. So every request that um, gets made um, has to have a token with it. So basically um, a user registers and when they register or log in, they get a token and each request then sent uh, to the server has to be accompanied with a token as well if it's a protected route. So we're gonna check if there's a token and that's gonna be sent in the header. So let's say const token is equal to request.header and we're checking for that auth token. Okay, so let's check if there's no token. So if no token, so if token is false. Um, let's return res.status of a 401. So we're sending back a 401 um, error code, and then we'll also pass back a JSON message as well. And um, we'll just say uh, no token provided. Okay, and then if there is a token, we're gonna verify the token. So we're just gonna do that with a try catch. So let's try and then catch, oops. And again, we get an error object if there's an error. And if there is an error, we'll send back a 401 again with a JSON message. And we'll just say message is token invalid. Okay, and if there is a token, well, we're gonna need to Verify it. So let's do const decoded is equal to jwt.verify. 
Okay, and then in here we need to pass in the token and config.get JWT secret, which we created earlier. So what we're doing is we're, we're um, getting that token as a request and we're feeding that into jwt.verify and we're verifying it against the secret that we created. Okay, and then if that's all good, well, we'll do request.user is equal to decoded.user and then we'll just do next. Okay, so that should work. So now we just need to finally set up some APIs. So let's create a new folder. We'll call this roots. And then inside of roots, we're gonna have an API folder. And inside of here, we're gonna have a couple of API scripts. Okay, so we're gonna have one for users and one for pets. So again, let's start with users.js. And there's a couple of things we need to do here. Uh, first of all, we need to bring in that user model. So let's say fetch user model, const user is equal to require. And we need to bring in that file that we created. So that was up two levels uh, into models and then user. Okay, and let's write some API tests here. So let's say, let's just write a bunch of comments here. That's uh, good practice to do. So it's gonna be API forward slash users forward slash test. Uh, description for this route is to test the users and it's gonna be access public. Okay, and we're just gonna do a quick test, router.get, and let's just test. So we'll get a request and a response, and let's just send back res.json, we'll send back some message saying uh, user API works. Okay, and then we just need to export it at the bottom. So module.exports is equal to router. And of course we need to bring in a bunch of other stuff as well. So we need to actually bring in that router. Um, so to say we need express. Uh, we need the router, which is part of express. So express.router. And I think that's it for now. Let's go ahead and test that. Oh, we need to bring it into our server.js. And let's just put it down here. So let's say, let's define some roots here. And we'll say app.use. And we wanna use, so if a user goes to API users, then we need to send them back that um, API file we just created. So that was in roots, API users, and that should work. So let's just go ahead and give that a test. Um, let's start up the server. Cool, and let's go to Postman. And Postman is just a software you can download for free. It just allows you to do like um, API requests. Okay, so let's just do a quick get request to that test API we just created. So that was in HTTP localhost 5000 API users forward slash test. Hit send and we get some JSON data back. So our API works. Okay, so now we need to actually extend on that API quite a lot. So let's just collapse all of this down for now. Um, just make sure we open up our users. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and write some comments again. So we're going to define a new route, and this is going to be a post. So we're going to try and register a user here. So this is going to be just to users, and the description is going to be to register a user, and it's going to be public. And we do router.post this time. So it's not a get request, it's a post request. And it's just to this URL. OK, 
Okay, and then we're gonna actually do some validation as well on what we get sent to us. So we actually need a package called Express Validator. Um, I can't remember if we have that installed again, so let's just double check. Okay, so we don't have that installed, so we need to install um, Express Validator. We'll probably also need Bcrypt as well. So let's go ahead and just install both of those. So npm install and it's express hyphen validator and bcrypt js. Okay, so let's go back to our users. And let's just bring a bunch of stuff in that I know we're gonna need. Um, so we're gonna need um, check and validation result from that um, require express validator. So we can use destructure in here to bring in check and validation result and set that equal to require. And again, it comes from express validator. Okay, uh, we're also gonna need JSON web tokens here. So again, uh, const JWT is equal to require. And let's bring in JSON web token. Uh, we're gonna need config. So require config get our um, secret key and we're going to need bcrypt as well that we just installed so it's so that equal to require bcrypt js okay so if you remember when we specified our schema for users we just set up some basic things like a name email and password um, so that's what we're going to test for first of all just to make sure that those are um, not empty um, an email is an email and a password is like a minimum amount of characters so just some kind of like basic validation so we're going to define that just here and after this we can do like our async request response as usual okay so we'll just set that up for now okay so this is where we do our validation so let's put a comment here saying validation and we can do check and what we're going to do is check the name because we're going to get a name and we're going to say name is required and then we're going to check that it's not empty okay uh, we're also going to check the email we'll say please include a valid email just to make sure that the you know, the field is um, actually an email address so we can use a method called is email for that and that'll just check that it is actual an actual email address and not just some random characters and we also need to check the password and we'll say please enter a password with six or more characters and we can use dot is length and we can say minimum six not 65 for six there we go Cool. So let's go ahead and check for those errors. So we'll do const errors is equal to validation result and pass in that request. Okay, so, so we need to check that the um, there is no errors. Um, so let's do, let's do errors and we can say is empty. So what we're doing here is saying is if it's not, say errors dot is empty. So if it's not empty, which means it actually has something. So if there is an error, hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of backwards, I know. Then we're gonna just return a response um, with a status code of 400 and a JSON message as before. And we'll just say errors and we'll pass in the errors dot array. Yeah, that should work. Cool. So now we need to actually extract some fields from the request.body. So we don't have to keep typing request.body.name, uh, request.body.email, etc. Let's just use destructuring to pull these out. So this is all coming from request.body. And what we wanna pull out of here is name, email, and password. Oh, and telephone, we get telephone as well. Uh, we'll do the validation for telephone later, that's fine. 
I just need to check that it's not empty because it should be a required field, I think. Okay, so now we can just do a try catch. So again, set that up as before. If it's an error, we'll get an error in our catch. And we can just do a console.log of that error. And we'll also send back a status of 500. And we'll say server error. That's if something goes really, really wrong. So hopefully that will never happen, but you never know. Okay, so in our try, um, let's see, we need to we need to find if the user already exists. So we need to do a lookup in our database and just check the email it doesn't already exist in our database. So let's just do um, a let user is equal to await, and then we're going to use that user schema that we brought in. And we'll do a find one, and what we want to find is that the email is equal to email, or we can just type it like this, that's fine. Okay, so we're just looking up into the database and we're checking if the email that we're getting in our in our post and our request, um, we're just seeing if that already exists in the database. And we can do that by using find one on our database schema. I'm pretty sure I brought that in, let's just double check. Yeah, we did. So that's great. So we now need to see if the user exists. So see if user exists. And we'll just do an if. So if user, so if there isn't a user, it has found a match, that email does exist, then we're going to return again a status code. So res.status 400, and we'll send back a JSON message as well. And we'll say errors. And yeah, we'll just say user already exists. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so if the user doesn't exist, whoops, we need to actually build up a model or build up a, an object. So let's say build user object. And that's going to be user is equal to a new instance of our user. And we want the name to be equal to name. And again, we can just use ES6 syntax and just type it like this because they're both called the same. Uh, same with email, password, and telephone. Okay, so this is our new user. So remember, this was a reassignable variable. So first of all, we're just testing if the user exists in the database. Um, and if it does, they get an error. If it doesn't, we're actually going to reassign user to our new object, our new um, instance of user. Okay, and then we need to go ahead and actually encrypt the password next. So let's encrypt the password so it's all secure. And we can use bcrypt for this. So we can say const salt is equal to await bcrypt. And then we can generate a salt. Let's we'll pass in 10 here for now. And then we can say user.password. And we can set that equal to await bcrypt.hash and we can pass in the password and then salt it. Cool. Now we need to save the new user. So we can do await user.save, which is again, just a, a method in Mongo to save into the database. Um, and then we're gonna get a payload back. So we can say const payload is equal to, and that's gonna be user ID is user ID. Okay, and now we just need to sign it with JSON Web Tokens. So let's do jwt.sign. Okay, let's pass in the payload. We also need to get the JWT secret that we created. So we'll do config.get and we can get JWT secret. Uh, we can set an expiry in here as well for how long the user can be signed in for or how long the, the token lasts for. So we can say expires in and we'll just uh, we'll just put a bunch of numbers for now, um, but we'll tidy this up later. Um, and then we're gonna get error, oops, in an error function, error token. And then if there is an error, we'll just throw an error. And if there's not, We'll res.json and just send back that token. 
Cool. And then we've got our catch set up and we've exported. So that should all work in theory. Let's just give it a try. We uh, obviously typed a lot of code there. Okay, let's have a look. Unexpected token. Okay, so it looks like I've got some errors here. Okay, uh, this should be a constant. Uh, apologies for the scrolling. Uh, it's not really an error, but I'll just end it anyway. Um, let's just try again, just in case it was that. Okay, yeah, it looks like it worked at that time. Okay, so we should be able to hopefully do a post now to our user API. And we need to send over name, email, password, and it was a telephone number. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we're going to swap this to a post. And let's do body, rule, and put this to JSON. Okay, so we're going to send over a name. And this is a user name, so we'll, we'll put my name. Um, what was it? Email. We'll do my email address. That was a password. I'll just do Scooby D. And there was a telephone. So I'll just put a bunch of numbers in now for now. Okay, so let's give it a try. Let's send. Cool, and we got a token back. So yeah, that's worked okay by the looks of it. Um, let's just check, yep, no errors in here. And now if we go to our database, we should hopefully see, if we click on collections, there will be that user. Cool, so there we go, in test users, we have that user. Okay, so here is the ID of the user. Um, here's the encrypted password and everything else that we put in. So that looks great. Um, so now we just need to do the pets. Okay, so a lot of this is going to be the same. So I'm just going to copy all of this. Uh, let's go and create a new file for pets.js. And remember, this is in our API. Let's paste in what we just copied. And let's just make a whole bunch of changes here. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be fetching the pet model. And this is going to be a pet. And the file is going to be pet. Okay, so it's going to be pet test. We'll say pet API works. I won't go through the hassle of testing it because I'm pretty sure it's going to work anyway. Uh, this is going to be to create your update a pet. Okay, validation. Um, I'm going to take this out for now. We'll probably do it in the next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so fields that we're expecting, um, I think it was just name and status in the request of body. Yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, um, so it's going to be pet and we're doing pet dot find one. Actually, I want to do find one and update because this might be a post to either create a pet or update a pet. So see, we're going to be find. Yeah, it's going to be find one and update. Actually, no, let me just think for a second. Okay, so in here, actually, we want to check for the owner. Uh, let's just put a comment saying check for owner. So await pet.find1. And we want to find the user. So remember, we have a user field in our schema. And this is going to come from request.user.id. So Okay, so yeah, we're going to test if a user ID is being sent with the request. If it has, then they're going to be updating the pet. If there is no um, 
pet found in the pet.find1 user request user ID, then that means the pet doesn't exist, so they're creating a new pet. So that's what we're testing for first. So we're going to, yeah, see if the pet exists. Okay, so if the pet does exist, we don't want that. We want to actually update the pet. And we'll say pet is equal to await. And then we'll do pet.find1 and update. Okay. And we'll pass in user is the request user ID. And we'll do set and we'll pass in the fields here. So we'll actually create an object in a second for that. Uh, we'll call it pet fields. And we'll say new is true. Okay, and let's just create that object just up here actually. So let's say build pet object. Pet fields is equal to new pet. Okay, and the user is going to be request user ID. The name is going to be name. The type, oh, we don't have a type yet. With the status, is going to be status. Cool. Yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then, yeah, this pet fields is being put into our update pet. And if it has been updated, we just need to return a response and we'll just return the pet. Let's remove these spaces, keep it neat. Okay, so hopefully, yeah, that makes sense. So basically, um, we'll have a user and that user's um, going to register and then log in or just log in. And once they're logged in, obviously they have a user ID associated to them already and obviously a token. And with the token and the user ID, that's going to either allow them to create a new pet or update an existing pet. So what we're doing is we're building our pet object and we're saying we're getting um, the ID from the body. We're actually not using destructuring, but we can get it this way. Um, and we're basically building our pet object and we're saying that the user is, and then we're feeding in um, the um, user ID that's being sent in that request. Um, and then if you remember in the schema for pet, we have a user and that's related to the actual user, if that makes any sense. Okay, and then what we're doing is just checking for an owner. Um, so if there is an owner, and we're doing that using the pet.find1 and it's checking that user against the um, request user ID that was being sent in. Um, and then we're going to update the pet. If there's not, then we're going to go ahead and create a new pet. So we don't need this here. And we'll say create pet. And we're just going to do pet is equal to new pet. And we can pass in those pet fields, say so that object just here that we created. Okay, uh, we don't need this, but we are gonna do a save. So let's say await and then pet.save. Uh, we don't need this stuff, let's get rid of that. Um, but we do need to return something. Um, so let's do res.json and send back that pet. So just like we did up here. So if it was updating the pet, we're returning the pet. If it's a new pet, we're returning the pet. Okay, so hopefully that works. Again, a lot of code to write. Uh, let's give it a test. Let's restart the server. No errors, so that's good. Uh, we do actually need to do the authorization. Um, so let's go ahead and actually bring that in. Uh, we didn't do the check, so we can get rid of that. Um, we don't need JWT, we didn't need config, and we don't need bcrypt. Um, but we do need that auth middleware that we created. So let's go ahead and bring that in. That was up two levels in middleware and then off. And then we can just literally pass that in just here. Uh, 
and this is where we would put our validation, which we'll do later. Okay, let's restart. Okay, let's do a quick test to our pet test first of all. So let's bring Postman up, and this is going to be pet test, and it's a get request. Uh, let's copy this token because we are going to need this. Okay, so get request did not work. And that's because I think we forgot to actually bring this into our server JS. So let's make sure we bring it into our application. Um, let me just paste this here a second, just so I don't lose it. Okay, and I think it's pets or oh, pet. Let me just double check. What do we do it to? Pet, yeah. Okay, grab the token again, save it. Let's just restart the server. Cool, and we get pet API works, that's great. Okay, so now let's try and do a post. And I'm gonna do it intentionally without the token. I just wanna make sure that that works okay. So you would put your token in here, um, but let's do, let me just paste this token somewhere so I don't lose it, one sec. Okay, so we have a name of our pet, which is gonna be Millie. And we have a status, which I'll put as true for now. And we need that user ID actually as well. Um, which I don't have, um, one second. Okay, so I think I can get the ID though. Um, this is the, I should just need to pass the token in, that should be fine. Um, let me just test this post and I should hopefully get a token warning, which I do, so no token provided, so that's great. So in the header, um, we just need to say xauth token and then paste in that token. So let me just grab it again put it in value, and now if we send again, server error, let's have a look. Ah, I think that's because I need to set this as JSON. There we go, let's try it again. Cool, so it looks like it's submitted correctly. Um, let's check it in our database. So if we refresh, we should have another collection for pets, and it should have our new record in and our user hooked up. So if you, at the moment we're looking at users, uh, this is my user object, this is my ID. So if you remember, it ends E5D. Okay, so now we go to pets. And this is our mini object. And you can see user is equal to that E5D. So it's li linked up the pet mini to my user, Liam Franklin. So that's worked perfectly. Okay, so now what I wanna do is grab this user ID and we need to rename our MIDI picture folder to this ID because when we do the front end and you know the user uploads, it's going to be stored in a folder with an ID of the user. So when a user logs in and they go to update the pet and they enter in you know, different details or they update something, they can also then upload an image. And then as that image is uploaded, we're gonna save it in a folder um, for that user ID, or for the pet ID rather. Um, so yeah, actually, sorry, we need the pet ID here, not the user ID. So let's copy this pet ID. So it ends 202. Let's go back to our playground in our pets folder, and let's rename Millie. So refactor, rename, and I'm gonna rename it to that folder, so 202. Cool, so now we need to actually go and retrain our model again. So, let me just paste this in, have it on the clipboard. So it's the same command as we used in the first video when we did the proof of concept and we originally trained the model. Um, obviously we just renamed the folder to Millie, so the labels need to be updated. 
So we're just going to go ahead and rerun this. It's not going to overwrite the changes we already made in the label image Python script. So that's all good. So let's just go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and rerun this. Let's see what's happened. Oh, I need to be in the playground folder. So CD playground. And let's rerun it. Okay. And that's going to go ahead. Oh, it's because I'm using um, a script for a different video. So it's actually pets folder, not products folder. Okay. Let's try it again. Nope. Still didn't like it. And that's because we didn't put it into your files. It was just a directory called pets on its own. Okay, so now it's working and retraining. Um, I'll pause it here because this can take a little while. Okay, I think that's done. So let's go and start the server again. Okay, let's go to the front end. And I've got a new picture of Millie here. So again, it's not known to the script. So it's a good way to test it again. So submit it and hopefully we get back that ID, which we do. So that's great. Okay. So now we have access to the ID in the results. So we need to actually fetch some associated data. So we need to obviously have the name of the pet. We need to have the owner, of course, um, the telephone number, and there'll probably be a whole bunch of stuff that we will also need if that exists in the future. So let's go ahead and make some edits to our script. So let's go back to server.js now and let's go back down here. Let's close all of this up for a second. Okay, so we're running post upload, we're doing all of that stuff. And then we're running and just returning the results. Let's just put some comments in here. Okay, so if error, throw error. Okay, so what we want to do is get the results and make some manipulations to them. So we have obviously an array of objects. Um, so we need to get inside of this and then make some manipulations. Okay, let's try this. Let's say const results is equal to json.pass and we're gonna get the pi res zero. Okay, so the actual objects. I think that's what it gives us. Let's just do a quick console log. Let's just, just send results and see what that gives us. I think that's exactly the same anyway. Um, okay. So let's try and do a promise then. Let's do promise.all. And we're going to do results. So we have those stored in a variable now. Dot map. And for each one, we'll call pipet. Okay. So then for each pet, attempt to look up the associated data. Okay, so this is what we're going to return. So we'll do pet find one. And we're going to try and pass in the ID. Okay, so we're finding against the ID in the database with the ID that we can get from pipet.id. So remember, we're getting the ID just here already. And this is obviously all the results. Okay, and then the results for each one is a result, so a single. So this is plural, this is all the results. We're feeding them in. We're mapping over each item in this um, in this array. And we've called it pipet. So that's a single object. So for example, just this one, that's pipet. 
and we can access the ID from that. So pipette.id, and this is what we're trying to look up. Okay, and then because this is a promise, we can do dot then and say pet. And this is where we can make some edits. So we can say pipet.name is equal to pet.name. Okay, so pet refers to the one in the database. And pipet refers, refers to the pet that we get back from Python. Hopefully that makes sense. I might try and make the naming conventions a little, make a little more sense. Oops. So pipet.owner would be equal to pet.user. Remember the user is in the database. So pipet.status is equal to pet.status. I think we called it status or did, yeah, did we call it missing? I think we actually called it missing. Let me just double check. We did. Okay. I keep calling it status for some reason. I get the feeling that I've used status somewhere else though, so I'm hoping it's not going to throw an error. Okay, so that's all done. Then we've got dot .catch. Um, but we don't actually want to throw an error if there's no pet that exists. Um, this is actually quite a, an odd one. Usually if there's an error, you want to handle it. Um, but I actually don't want to handle it in this case because it doesn't matter if the pet doesn't exist in the database. Chances are it probably won't unless it's registered with us. Okay, and then this entire thing is obviously a promise anyway. Um, so we do dot then and just put an error function here and this will be dot catch. And we'll, if we get an error, we'll just console.log the error which we should never get unless it really messes up. Okay, so and once it's gone through all the iterations, it's made manipulations and added data in if the data exists, we then need to send this back to the user on the front end. So we'll just do res.send results. And that should hopefully work. Let's give it a go, let's restart the server. Let's upload an image. Just check there's no errors. And we have an error. Let's have a look. Uh, pet is not defined, so return pet.find1. We probably didn't bring in the pet schema. So let's just make sure we brought it in. So where do we bring in the user? Okay, we actually need to bring them both in, I think. Okay, so let's do const pet is equal to require models pet and const user is equal to require models and then it was user. Actually, it doesn't look like we need user. I don't think we used user. Um, it doesn't look like we need mongoose either. Okay, let's just try it again. Okay, let's submit the results. And hopefully we get back MIDI with a whole bunch of additional fields, which we don't. So let's have a look. Cannot set headers after they're sent to the client. Ah, it's because we're sending twice. So let's just delete that one. Try again. Submit, and hopefully we get back the uh, correct results now with additional data, which we do. Great, so we have access now to the pet ID, the score percentage, which again is 98%, again, this is a new image. The name of the pet is Millie, the owner ID, which we know E5D results to my user. 
e5d and we get missing is false which I thought we set to true but maybe we didn't no okay but no that's a great success I think so next steps is of course we're going to try and plan out this whole schema a little bit more there's going to be a lot more fields we probably want to add into this we're also going to start the front end in React, I think, in the next video. And of course, now we have access to this owner ID, we can make it so you can click on it and then it'll make another API request, passing in this user ID to get the user and then all of the associated data with the user. So yeah, it's coming along nicely. Um, hopefully this video has helped. Uh, we went over a lot of stuff today and I apologize for the length of this video. Any questions, just feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer. And I'll see you in the next one.